and gentlemen. So for, for some reason after running the marathon, and I've run a couple, I always go to look at the standings afterward, but I look at the, the last people to finish, and for some reason I like to look up who are the oldest people who ran in the marathon. For some reason I find this inspirational or something like that. And so in one marathon that I ran, there was a 91-year-old man, and in another there was an 88-year-old woman. And I used to joke to my mom, I used to say, you could train for 20 years, and you'd still be a lot younger than the oldest woman who finished the race with me. And she used to laugh and ha-ha, it's kind of funny. So a few years later, I was running in my most recent marathon, which was, uh, I usually run in New York, but this was in Philadelphia, uh, which is my hometown. So for the first time, my mom came to watch me run in the hometown. That was really great. And unlike the New York marathon, which I'm sure people have been to, it's much smaller, so you can see the same person cross like at the beginning, twice in the middle, at the end. And so she's watching, really cheering me on. So she's watching with the people that she just happens to run into. They're watching the guy in the family run, who's in his 50s, and it turns out that uh, she says, isn't that not that healthy? Is it bad for your knees to run when you're older? And they say, actually, no, he's an orthopedic surgeon. He knows all this stuff. It's not bad for your knees to get good form. If you have bad form, that's so good. So I finished the marathon in my hometown, and I'm so excited. It's a very emotional thing. And in Philadelphia, it's small enough that you can be there to meet your son when he crosses the finish line. She's in She's in tears. Everyone's in tears. I'm in tears. Everyone's in tears. It's like this big moment. She gives me a big hug and she says, All right, Josh, I will do it. Like, what are you talking about? She's like, I will enter a marathon. I will do a marathon. I said, like, I didn't ask you to do this. But uh, I'm also kind of like tired. But I'm like, All right, if she wants to do it, I'll back her up. So uh, after the winter, she signs up for the marathon. You know, to get in, you can get guaranteed in if you raise money for a charity and she raised it for the Michael J. Fox Foundation. And uh, what she did, the first year of training, she hurt her leg. So the entire family believed me for her hurt leg. With the exception of her, she did not. But uh, then a year later, she got guaranteed acceptance again and she ran, uh, she entered the marathon. And at 66 years old, as a grandmother of five, never having run more than a 5K at all, my mother ran the New York City Marathon and finished. And her only go her goals were to finish and not to be last in her age group, and she achieved both of these goals. So, oh. <laughs> it's not for me to finish. And uh, by the way, nobody who blamed me for her hurt leg gave me credit for her finishing. <laughs> but, uh, so during the race, my stepbrother and I went out to Brooklyn, we saw her run by there, and we calculated how long it would take her to get to First Avenue. We took the subway to the First Avenue and got there 20 minutes ahead of time. Big sign, go Grandma Marie. Because we want to cheer her on. And everyone comes by and they're like, oh, Grandmother's going to come by. We want to see that. So they come and they stand with us and they wait for her. But we were there early and it turns out she had slowed down. So they would wait for a little bit. And another people, another bunch of people would come and wait and then they would leave. So people kept coming and going. And a huge swath of people that, a huge swath of people that, you know, the New York City Marathon had gone by. And where was she? And at one point we looked down and we can see like the sweet van coming. And in front of the sweet van, it's like, oh. she's like barely keeping up, but she's in it. She's totally in this. And there's like not, not many fans around, but we hold out the big sign and we're like, I'm like mom and you know, Grandma Marie. And as she comes over, across First Avenue, six flights up on the roof is a party chanting, Grandma Marie, Grandma Marie, Grandma Marie, which we were like totally surprised at. And she comes over and gives us all a big hug. And then turns and gives him a big victory wave and goes on and then she finishes the marathon. That, that could have ended the story. But it, the next year, uh, I go to watch the marathon with her. This is her first time watching it, having run it. And it's me and her and, and uh, my nephew, uh, her grandson. And we were sitting there watching the marathon and it occurs to me, that party might be going on this year. And so we walk over from uh, Central Park back over to First Avenue. We have to wait for everyone to go by. We cross over, buzz like everything we can buzz. <laughs> and finally someone lets us in. And we just walk up all the stairs, not knowing where we are, climb up the uh, ladder, and I'm the first one up. And people look over and they're like, who are you? And I'm like, I don't want to answer that because I don't have a good answer, but I say, do you guys know Grandma Marie? And they're like, yeah, of course. She was that woman last year. And I was like, well, here she is. And she's like, just popping out of the floor. 
And she's like a big celebrity for this whole thing. So everyone comes over. And she was like, oh, we can't go. I have to go meet your sister. But now suddenly she's like, I got time. And, uh, so then uh, about a year after that, she'd gotten all into this barefoot running stuff, minimal shoe running, not totally barefoot, which by the way, I highly recommend. Uh, and she went to, she was in Central Park for a uh, class and she was taking them how to have good form when you run. And she's just sitting there paying attention and uh, someone comes up and she feels like a tap on the shoulder. And she turns around and the guy says, she's wearing the shirt she, that she ran the marathon in, and the guy says to her, hey, I just saw your shirt and I, I wanted to say thank you for your efforts. I really appreciate it. And it was Michael J. Fox. Wow. So it was one of my Ladies and gentlemen, Julia Maddox is going to be our last storyteller. So we have Very nice. What? Very nice. I thought we were all. Got it all. Got it all in there.